Okay, Rob, why don't we begin with you? I want to hear your 30-second testimony. All right, my, my 30-second testimony. I took two minutes last time. I'll try and <laughs> truncate it down. Uh, born in India in 88, grew up in a Christian family, uh, still an atheist, uh, but I had the freedom to be one. Moved to Australia in 97 when I was nine. Met you in Perth in 2014. And 2010 was my opa's passing. So between 2010 and 2014, that's the, his funeral kickstarted that whole thing, my, my journey into faith. And then just, yeah, when, when I interacted with Hugh's work and research and amalgamated that with other academic but more theologically orientated studies, I became Christian soon after, so from 2015 onwards. Been a huge fan of Hugh Ross's work and other scholars' work as well. And... Uh, here I am. This is my first Zoom uh, with you. <laughs> so, All right. Great to see you. Yeah. Hey. Well, I was with Lee in the uh, previous breakout room. So, Lee, why don't you share? Okay, very good. Well, as I mentioned uh, to you, when I was a 10th uh, grader in high school, I attended uh, a number of Youth for Christ rallies, Saturday night rallies in Santa Barbara. After one of them, I went forward and established my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And my life has been totally changed. I've had ups and downs, and I've just uh, enjoyed that relationship with God. Uh, what I didn't tell you was when I met Mary, my wife, I discovered the best kept secret of the world, and that's RTB. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I'll give my 30 second. Born, raised, and educated in Canada. Got started studying astronomy when I was seven. By age 16, realized the universe must have a beginning. I wanted to find the beginner. And uh, looked at the world's uh, holy books and some of the great philosophical writings. And after two years study, in depth of the Bible realized it alone was utterly trustworthy and reliable and predicted future historical events, future scientific discoveries, and uh, recognized too, it revealed the person who created the universe and how he sacrificed himself so we could trade our moral imperfection for, for his moral perfection. That sounded like a great deal. So I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ when I was 19 years of age and immediately began sharing my faith with my fellow students and professors. I've seen numerous ones of them come to faith in Christ. Hey, all of you kept it about 30 seconds. I'm impressed. That was pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, Rob, it sounds like you weren't born in Australia. Where were you born? Hyderabad, India. Hyderabad, yeah. India. So my, my, my family is European descent, but due to the Japanese going through Burma, so the British were helping the Gurkha army of India to hold them off. And then obviously, so Opa Oma is the German terminology and for my grandparents. And um, that's how my parents met. And then on it goes. Yeah. Right. Well, I actually have uh, relatives who were professors in India uh, long before I was born. <laughs> and the one told stories of hunting tigers in India. So. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. We actually have so. good good stories. Um, uh, well, and some of them goofy stories of exactly that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, my heritage is one of coming from a family of soldiers and professors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and the story is that the professors fought a whole lot more than the soldiers did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so, and also I apologize if I put you on the spot there, Hugh, about the neutrino mass. I, I actually stumbled across that last night, to be honest, and then by happenstance I saw your Facebook post, hey, there's going to be a Zoom meeting on, and I'm like, you know what, I'll just come on and check it out. And, yeah. Well, uh, they got reasonably decent uh, measures of the neutrino mass, and uh, there was some promise that that uh, amazing instrument in uh, Italy uh, that's underneath uh, 4,600 feet of rock. Mm. Might be able to get us better measures of the neutrino mass, but they basically confirmed the earlier studies. So mm. there's nothing really new in that department. 
Uh, but we do know that neutrinos only make up a tiny fraction of all the uh, dark matter mass in the universe. So there's other particles mm -hmm. there that we have yet to discover. You, and the first you, thing I think, yeah, go ahead. You, you wrote a, a blog post like a week or two ago, actually, that ironically, the timing of this is interesting because 20th of Jan or something, you wrote a blog post about this. Um, you mentioned someone's fingerprint, like 16 trillion neutrinos go through a fingerprint. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Is that connected to this? No, uh, okay. Uh, what they were doing was uh, trying to discern uh, which neutrinos coming out of the sun come from hydrogen fusion. Oh, okay, okay. And which come from the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle. And for the first time, they actually detected neutrinos from the carbon oxygen and nitrogen oxygen cycle. Mm -hmm. It had never been done before. And uh, it basically tells us, it affirms that indeed, the sun right now is in an extremely, exceptionally stable luminosity phase. The exact phase we need to be in for humans to exist. So that was kind of the bottom line okay. of the blog article I was writing. Uh, but this instrument in Italy is amazing. Uh, they literally hollowed out a huge laboratory uh, that measures about 100 meters long, uh, 65 meters high and about 50 meters wide, uh, where they put this gigantic neutrino detector there. Mm. And it's literally under 4,600 feet of, uh, of rock, which blocks out all the cosmic rays. Mm. Because the cosmic rays give you false positives for neutrino detectors. But yeah, yeah. the neutrinos yeah. interact so weakly that even though you got trillions of them going through your thumbnail every second, this detector needs something uh, that is 60 feet high and 60 feet wide uh, <laughs> in order to be able to detect just yeah. one, uh, about one a week. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I was, I, and, I, and I read, I think, your fingerprint of God, you mentioned, because I have Logos and I can keyword search your books through Logos. Mm -hmm. And you said something like 600 trillion miles of of liquid water is required to... Like, in other words, neutrinos can go through 600 trillion miles without interacting with right. the liquid water. And, and it's just well, the like, whole idea is that maybe one out of a quadrillion will interact. And so if you've got a reasonably sized detector, some of my thermometers, you might pick up one of those one in a quadrillion. And so if you've got a big enough tank and you can make sure that there's no cosmic ray uh, uh, causing noise, you can actually pick up the occasional neutrino that interacts. Interesting. Yeah. Is I mean, for example, mm -hmm. you'll probably live your whole life with maybe one or two neutrinos interacting with your body. In is that completely the, random or is can you actually predict oh here comes a neutrino sort of like maybe mathematically you, you could sort of predict because you said once a week is that predictable or well that's about the average it's not predictable it's it's yeah. it's, it's quantum mechanics so we know that there's going to be a small possibility that there will be an interaction event uh but it's mm -hmm. totally random you never know when it's going to happen okay. but there's neutrino detectors around the world uh, where they're looking for these chance encounters. Oh, it's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> well, what fascinates me is I think we're really close to finding what I believe is a dominant dark matter particle, and those are axions, and they're much harder to detect than neutrinos. Uh, but if they're as abundant as we think they are in the universe, they'll actually cause white dwarf binary stars to cool more rapidly than if there are no axions. And oh, there was a paper published two years ago where they said, we look, we see that there's one uh, white dwarf that's in a binary relationship with another star, indeed is cooling faster than it should. Uh, and they actually had a four standard deviation uh, measurement of the excess cooling. Uh, but four standard deviations is not enough to win the Nobel Prize. You have to have five or six standard mm -hmm. deviations. So there's now an effort where they're looking at 100 white dwarf binary stars. Because with 100, you've got a much higher statistical chance of a finding it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> Saying goodbye to my younger son. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually came across a legit physicist on YouTube. She um, she's an apparently an astrophysicist. It's I forget her name. Doctor. She's a popular YouTuber with like five hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, two nights ago, actually, when he's speaking about dark matter, she mentioned a very recent study, as of a week ago. Um, started to notice an anomaly about a cluster of galaxies, like uh, something like one hundred twenty-five of them that showcase uh, gravitational tugging that may be evidence against dark matter. I could be getting this wrong, but um, I don't know if you if you came across that. Because yeah, there's recent. a little bit of that in the fourth edition of The Creator in the Cosmos. And I've actually got some more in a new book. I've just finished a new book uh, okay. called Cosmic Interior Designs. The difficulty there is getting enough precision on the dynamical movements of these galaxies relative to one another to figure out, are we looking at dark matter or are we not? There is a competing model. They call it MON, Modified Newtonian Yes, dynamic. she mentioned, she talk, spoke, spoke about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've written about MON basically making the point, the only evidence for MON as opposed to dark matter is these galaxy interactions interesting. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that can explain those galaxy interactions. And so it's a really tough way to try to distinguish between bond and dark matter. And we got lots of independent evidence that it really is dark matter and not bond. Yeah. And, and so she said that as well. She's like, look, there's just truckloads of evidence. It's just as, yeah. This is the one anomaly we're still trying to figure yeah. out and it's going to be the most challenging anomaly <laughs> to try to discern. It's like this a, is a lot of things that can affect the movement of galaxies relative to one another. Right. Like a thorn in the flesh, right? <laughs> it is. Right. Yeah. Well, good talking to you. I'm, I'm supposed to close the meeting out, so but you're definitely welcome to join us. But I, I do, I have to say, getting up that early in the morning has got to be tough. So... No, I appreciate, I appreciate all your work here. So you're a huge blessing. And that's, I mean, if I can honor that, if I can honor that, then, yeah. Well, you've been a real encouragement to me with the stuff that you post. So thank you. Thank you. Hugh. So, yeah. And maybe I'll get to Perth one of these days. I've been there twice. <laughs> the, but Qu Qantas the is still closed for even for this year. I know. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they refer to Perth as the most isolated big city in the world. <laughs> and we had one COVID case uh, last week, last Monday. The whole city shut down for the first time for one week. And now there's apparently one no... Week. Yeah, a, a UK strain came in and caused a big bit of havoc, but yeah. Well, a month ago, we were getting 15,000 new cases a week just in Los Angeles. So. Oh, that's... <laughs> I mean... Uh, we're, we're being very careful here for good reason. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my shot. Have you gotten your shot yet, Lee? Uh, no. Every time I get a flu shot, I get deathly ill. So I'm kind of hoping for the herd yeah. immunity thing. Because if I did get if I get one of those flu shots, I know for sure I'm going to be laid up for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I do fine with the flu shots and. You know, my team here is wanting me to get the COVID shot as soon as possible because they want to have me go on airplanes again. So, but yeah, hey, you, I got a close one. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, ask Fuzz to maybe write a blog article or something on the vaccine because more and more, believe it or not, it's going like wildfire on social media. Conspiracy theories that the vaccine is this oh, and no. that. And, and I know, I know no. Fuzz did a, a COVID Q&A on RTB, uh, like a live Q&A, but I think something did, written should... But he also wrote a 3,000-word blog that's up on our website, so see if you can find okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. It's back about a month. It's a very good blog. I actually okay. linked it on my Facebook page, so if you go down there, you'll find it. Okay. Thanks, you. God okay. bless you. All right. Goodbye to all of you. God bless.